Welcome. In this example, we're going to be using the method of virtual work to calculate the rotation at the left end of this simply supported beam. So what we have is a simply supported beam. It's of a total length L. It's got a point load of P in the middle. It has a flexural stiffness EI, and the ends have been identified as A and B. We'll go through our four-step process. We'll start by looking at the real loading. So let's get a sense of what's going on here. Let's sketch a deformed shape. To sketch the deformed shape, we'll think that the point under the load P really has to move down. It's going to move down to about here. The point at the pin and the roller have to stay at the pin and the roller. And so we'll have a smooth curve that looks something like this. And we're interested here in this rotation right at A. Now this step isn't strictly necessary, but it helps to visualize what it is that we're looking for. Now what do we need to do in step one? We need to compute the moment diagram due to the real loading. Hopefully by now, this isn't too difficult. Uh, we could go through and, and, and compute the reactions at A and B and, and go through the whole process to find the shear diagram, to find the moment diagram. But we'll just draw in the moment here. Hopefully at this point you even have this one memorized. Take a look at this if you don't. The simply supported beam, point load P in the middle, the moment diagram is triangular, magnitude of PL over 4. So recall that when we're working on these problems for deflections by virtual work, we need to be fairly good at this point at generating our moment diagrams. Step two, apply the virtual load. Recall that we apply our virtual load at the location of and in the direction of desired displacement. Well, the desired displacement in this in this context, displacement is a general term that can also include rotation. The desired displacement is this rotation at the left end. And so we're going to apply a moment at the left end, or a rotational force at the left end. How did I decide to draw it uh, clockwise versus counterclockwise? Well, I'm following the same direction as the actual rotation. This is where it helped me out a little bit to draw the deformed shape. So now that I know that when I get an answer, that answer should be positive, and it'll correspond to the actual direction of rotation. So we move on to step three, which is to come up with the virtual moment diagram. Now here, and actually let's go back here, that should have magnitude of one. Here, well, this isn't a configuration that I'm used to, and so we'll do some equilibrium calculations. But what I note here is that this moment right here is tending to rotate this beam clockwise. And so what I need are forces that tend to rotate it counterclockwise, or down on the left, up on the right, down on the left, up on the right, up on the right, down on the left. The total length is L, so if the magnitude of these is 1 over L, when I multiply by the length of L, I get a moment of 1. So these forces are in equilibrium. I can now come down, sketch up some construction lines, and draw my shear diagram. Fairly straightforward. And then I can draw my moment diagram. I have a moment at the left end, magnitude 1. Here I should have indicated the value is minus 1 over L. So since the shear is negative, the moment comes down. And we indeed see that it comes down to 0. Minus 1 over L times L gives me minus 1. It comes from 1 down to the value of minus 1. And that's what we expect because there's no moment on this other side right here. Draw the curvature of the moment. So now we have the real moment diagram. We have the virtual moment diagram. And it's time to move on to step four now and actually perform the integral. So if we look at our virtual work equation, the rotation here is equal to 
1 over EI times the integral. And in this case, we're going to integrate over the whole length. We'll call that 0 to L if we take x is equal to 0 at point A. PL over 4 here. 1 here. And that's the integral that we need to calculate. So how do we do this? Well, this is where I'll bring out my trusty little integration table. And let's see. Let's see what we have here. I have a triangle here with the point in the middle, somewhere in the middle. It doesn't necessarily have to be equal, but in our case, A is equal to B is equal to L over 2. And I have a triangle here. Now there's a problem because in our case our triangle has the height on the left end and in this case the height is on the right end. If we really had an, a triangle here that was uneven, so if, if this length were different from that length, I'd have to do some mental flipping to get this triangle over. But it gets a little bit easier if A is equal to B is equal to L over 2. It simply is this equation here, 1 sixth height of one of the triangles, height of the other triangles, times L plus the distance to the peak, which is L over 2. So let's keep this here in mind. This is the equation that we're looking at. And so we have that the rotation is equal to 1 over EI. 1 sixth is the factor. The height of one of the rectangles the height of the other rectangle, and then this term here, L, and then plus the A, and the A is the distance L over 2 here. And so we're good to go. Let's just look through these one more time. The 1 over EI comes down here. The 1 sixth is brought over here. M, which is the height of this triangle, is PL over 4. M prime, which is the height of the other triangle, 1, and then the L plus A, the L is right here, and A is the distance from the left end to the peak, which is L over 2. So let's come back to our work here. We simply simplify it at this point. An L will factor out of here and a PL here. So I'm going to bring a PL squared over EI, and then just be left with the fractions. 1 sixth from that term, 1 quarter from that term, the 1. That's the nice thing about the unilode method. The 1 just kind of falls out. And I have a 1 plus 1 half here. This we can also see as 3 halves. So then we have 3 PL squared over 6 times 4 is 24 times 2, 40 ADI. And that's our answer. I always like to think about units, too. I like to check my answer with units. So let's think about the units here. Theta is in radians. Radians, as you'll recall, are unitless. So this whole expression should be unitless. P, force, L is length squared. And let's do an aside here. EI. EI is going to be like a, uh, EI is going to be a quantity like KSI. So force per length squared. I, the moment of inertia, is going to be a quantity like inches to the fourth or millimeters to the fourth. So length to the fourth. So this gives us force length squared. So pretty much just remember this. EI force length squared. So we're dividing by EI here, and that indeed is a unitless quantity. So the units check out, we're happy with this. Now, if this were an actual uh, problem with numbers, we would now plug in a value for P, say 3 kips, L, maybe 20 feet, E if it's steel, 29,000 KSI, I could be something like 200 inches to the fourth, and, and we would just plug in those numbers and plug and chug. But for now, 
this is our answer right here.